Hey everyone, real quick, I just want to let you know this week is going to be a little bit different. We actually had a band come in and uh, do the podcast with us. They um, came in and they played live set here in the cutting room of four songs. They're a local band, uh, New Braunfels, San Antonio area, called Icy Land. Um, they're a really cool band, so we had them come in they played a set, you know, four songs. And they sat down and did the podcast with us and talked a little bit about themselves and um, the music and whatnot. Um, I also just want to apologize for the um, podcast this week. There was a really bad ground loop. We had an issue here in the studio with the electric that we're getting figured out now. Um, but we, there was nothing we could really do. Um, the band was already here and ready to do the podcast. So we went ahead and did it. Um, so I, I'm sorry about the uh, really bad buzz. There's nothing we could really do. But anyway, uh, check out the band. It's called I See Land. And uh, listen to the podcast afterwards. Thanks. <laughs> we're I see land and we're gonna play some songs.
expression. I'm stable. I live if only to be. Beauty is lack of understanding. A mere illusion of coinciding factors simultaneously acting on one another. Formless, understood mirage of solace.
That's it. Thanks. Thank you. Hello, welcome back to Color in the Shape of Sound Studios, Studio Cast 3. All right, uh, you guys want to introduce yourselves? No? Yeah, no? Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll start. Uh, I'm Austin. I play bass and sing. Yeah. Don't worry about that. Okay, uh, yeah, I'm John. I play guitar. Uh, uh, this is also Joey. Say hi, Joey. Uh, what up? Hey. He plays guitar, too. And uh, I'm Josh. Uh, I play drums in Icy Land. Yeah, and that's the band name, Icy Land. Icy Land. Icy People Land. always get it wrong. They're like Icy Land, like like the drink, like Icy's. <laughs> no, I C Land. Period. It's three words with a period at the end. <laughs> you can find it on Twitter, on Facebook, wherever. Just get the period we'll right. Even, we'll even enunciate. Yeah, seriously. I still don't. See land. I'll even yeah. point when, I, when I'm just like I C Land, and people are like. Icy land, what? If you come up, if you go to one of our shows and you have an icy, like like the drink in your hand, I'll slap it out of your hand <laughs> and I'll tell you to fuck off. <laughs> he's, now, he's done it. We don't hate icies though. I love oh, icies. I have love you ever had a big red icy? icy yeah. Yeah. Big red icies are everything. You're not not prejudiced against icies. No, no. 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 Well, ac mm. <laughs> well, actually. Depending if we're at Except a show or not. <laughs> the fruit flavored icies are not good. There's a difference of an icy and a oh. Slurpee. Yeah. Is there, yeah, it's, not, the it's not the same cherry? thing. The, same. the white cherry Those ones are, are dope. They're, they're often confused, but much different. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what's the big difference between a Slurpee and an Icy? Is, is I, I think Icy's everything. have chunkier ice, and Slurpees are like, what you get at 7-Eleven. We they're need like, to test this. <laughs> Diabetes. I think it's the process and how they make. Like, yeah. Apparently Icy's... Well, I think like Slurpees are in that machine at the gas station that is always turning, mm -hmm. like, all day. Right. And then Icy's are like the, like kiosk that has like the little machine that was shredded ice. Ooh. Ooh. Anyway, you guys are a band. You play music. Yeah, we do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I see that. <laughs> and uh, I guess even though genres are like no one agrees with it, what would you consider yourself? Do you consider yourselves? Uh, uh, emo. Yeah, emo. Emotive hardcore maybe? Post -rock. I'd say a post-rock emotive. Yeah, we're emotive. not really post-rock because we have vocals, but we're we're definitely inspired by some post rock bands like uh, This Will Destroy You, Explosions in the Sky, Godspeed. German Godspeed Death Reggae. Reggae. I think <laughs> I think that's what we are. I think I think that you should change the name to Satan Sex Sandwich. <laughs> yes, and then you can be that. Oh right, yeah, Death. Sandwich. <laughs> but um, I don't know what. I guess when I was growing up, I always thought that emo was like like my, my chemical, chemical romance. romance. Oh, yeah. everybody does. Everybody yeah, thinks yeah, that. I don't. I guess I mean, it's like, more like just rock, I guess. I don't yeah, know. It, we don't blame you, though. I mean, yeah, that's I mean, what society told you. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. can lie to, man. I it, mean, it's, <laughs> it's a knee-jerk reaction. It, it's, if you tell people yeah. you play emo music, they just want to punch Oh, you my chemical face. romance, what? <laughs> oh. Yeah, but I, I'm not okay. I was talking to you about coming on the show or whatever, on the podcast, when you told me that, I was like, that's what I was expecting, oh, I guess. Oh, yeah. But I'm, like, stuck in the early 2000s, so... Yeah, you know. no, it's because, um... A lot of bands that people can uh, connect with emo is like Mike and McGraw Mads, or maybe like what are some like Fall Out Boy. Fall Out Boy. Boy. I I don't know. I think that's more like pop punk yeah. to me. I mean, yeah. I know Dude, plenty. It all sounds like pop punk. Yeah, yeah, that's why I don't know why emo is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know plenty of people who say uh, when they I say emo, they say brand new, which is yeah. like it, I think yeah, I think that too. They're on the right path, but it's like, like it's like tip of the iceberg. Yeah, yeah. it's like yeah. Night Out. It's like the those. most commercial emo that's yeah. like real. That yeah. they, like, they were signed on to a small uh, record label, yeah. and they really just got popular. Yeah. Anytime I try to introduce someone to emo, I always either show them Title Fight or Lot of Spew. And like those aren't even like Title Fight is more hardcore with oh, emo yeah, twists. I, I mean, I don't even. They've 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 evolved. Yeah. The thing is though is that like like uh, emo actually derives, or at least I consider it deriving from the '90s. Yeah. Hardcore from hardcore. Um, I well, yeah, it started. I, it started in the '80s with bands like Minor Threat. Okay, yeah. Well, Minor, I, I would it, consider like uh, Jesus and the Mary Chain, because mm -hmm. from Jesus and the Mary Chain you get shoegaze, and from some shoegaze you get emo. Yeah. And for those that don't know, shoegaze is the genre that got fairly popular from the '80s and '90s, and within the late '90s, it's when you had emo born with bands like 
American football. Um, yeah, it was a boring. Jazz. It was, jazz. I hate myself. It was more like, uh, like made more accessible. Yeah. But like it still contained its roots. Yeah, like. But emo's like a confluence of things. You have to think like goth, like the Cure, that is post punk, yeah. yeah, hardcore, and uh, yeah. And there's yeah. many different you know, offshoots. And then well. somehow, somehow the label got thrown on the Michael Chemical Romance, and we were like, what the fuck? It was like a trendy word. It became a fashion, like, emo became more fashion than music. Yeah, 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 I remember that whenever I was in high school, like, the scene kids or whatever. Oh, man. Yeah. That was a thing, I don't, I don't know that And, like, was. even, like, emo bands today, like, bands I would consider true emo would be, like, a band called, like, Old Grey. Old Grey, yeah. And, uh... That's the epitome of emo. And it, if you look at the way guys, like guys that are in bands like Old Grey, the way they dress, you wouldn't even be able to guess. They're like, oh, they're emo. They look yeah. like normal dudes. Yeah. yeah. So, like, the it's whole... Just a, it's just a, like, genre. It's not like a... Yeah. Yeah. So, like, the whole, like, emo fashion statement thing with, like... It's not like crab core. I mean, that being, that being said, like, uh, a lot of, like, emo kids, like, true emo kids, yeah. they all dress, like, they all wear skate highs and they wear black pants. Yeah. And so, I mean, there is, like, a... It's a thing behind it, but it's... it's a. Yeah. And another thing is there's a lot of kids that like that kind of emo that are really into our stuff as well. Really? It's like when we'll play when we play shows there will be a lot of scene kids there and mm-hmm. I mean I don't I mean I'm not gonna I mean Nothing if, you, against if you're, listen, if you're yeah. listening to the music that's that's great. Yeah, music is just music doesn't have anything to do with fashion, so oh, yeah. <laughs> we will we will take any fans. <laughs> yeah. You guys remember trip pants? No, that sounds like an awesome. Is that like they were like you ripped them off? They were like the really big baggy pants from Hot Topic that had chains all over them. Oh, I didn't know what they were called. I remember those. Yeah, those are hot. (laughs) (laughs) More women should wear those. (laughs) (laughs) And men. What? True. Uh, Yeah, I I remember that. I just didn't know they were called that. (laughs) But um, I guess you guys play locally in San Antonio. You're a San Antonio band, right? Uh, we were all from you were all aside from Josh. Uh, yeah, do yeah. know. <laughs> For expediency, uh, we typically say San Antonio just so we don't have to get into the conversation. Well, where is New Braunfels? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just say San Antonio. Yeah. And there's like there's it's nothing like the here. Big town, yeah. There's yeah. nothing here uh, aside from country music, which is like it's cool. It has its own thing, but yeah. uh, it's not like we could play at Green Hall. I would mm-hmm. want to play at Green Hall, honestly. Yeah. But like. Wasn't Willie Nelson just there? Was he? Dude, I'd open for Willie Nelson. Yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> like, a bunch of just uh, old white people just, like, frowning. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. God, we would just... Sad old we people. We would kill that shit. And people would just be so Because, like, the off. sadness is universal, so, like, whenever, like... We'll <laughs> not, not in... Not in <laughs> like, they'll, they'll understand. 80-year-old people are sad because they, they have broken hips and their back hurts. They Death can really? approaching. <laughs> yeah. It's like, let's make you more sad. <laughs> Like yeah. I want to grabs broke. <laughs> but yeah, um, San Antonio is definitely more home. Mm-hmm. Uh, next to San Antonio is Austin. Our first show is actually in Austin. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we played our first show in late June, early June. Uh, it was, yeah, it was mid to late. We've been a band for a little over two months at this point. Um, Which we've is crazy. All, we've all been in other bands, but okay. uh, this is the. F- I mean, Not this me. band. Mm-hmm. Formed about well, I mean we we practiced it's before that, but our first show was about two and a half months ago. Yeah, like when was the EP put out? Like January? We put yeah, we put the EP out in late December, early January. Yeah, we we recorded it over November, or December of 2015. And then I joined in yeah. May. It was something no, like no, it was like I thought it was like April. What comes first, May or April? <laughs> April. <laughs> This is great podcasting. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's August. Oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah, so I joined around April, and then we practiced for a few weeks, and then came June, we had our first show. Mm-hmm. Cool. I don't awesome. think we were expecting to play as much as we do. Really? Uh, we play a lot of shows. Uh, we've we've yeah. been very fortunate in the people we've met. Yeah, and, we, uh, yeah we've played a few shows uh, in Dallas. And, yeah. Um, we played in a rooftop in Arlington, which sounds like super awesome. It was at a yeah. facility. Like the crowd there was just uh they were all sitting down. They were all really? sitting down and getting. It was like a high. college party. Oh, okay. Yeah. They just stared at us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's, what is this? I mean, we had some guys making fun of us. Really? <laughs> that was fun. Yeah. But it was like driving sound. driving all the way there and have people make fun of you while you're doing a sound check. <laughs> wow. Yeah. We had. Uh, yeah, there's people that don't get it. 
Like, it was just fun. like if they made fun of us after we played, like I can respect that. <laughs> yeah. But it was just like like you don't know who we are yet. Like they're wearing the same shoes. Yeah. <laughs> they're all wearing old schools. Like, oh, I got oh yeah, you guys are wearing the same shoes. I'm the only one not I wearing. I usually wear those, those but <laughs> yeah, these are falling apart. <laughs> yeah, over the summer though, we played about ten or eleven shows. Awesome. Yeah. It was pretty cool. Like just starting off, like we were like, okay, like in my mindset, I was like, okay, we're gonna play this one show. And maybe another show next month. And it just took off. It just took, yeah, it was really cool. Well, you, you guys yeah. seem like you work really well together. You're really tight. I, like, I, I hadn't heard of you guys until you hit me up on the studio page. Yeah. Um, but if you would have told me you've been only together a couple months, I would have not known. Really? Yeah, you guys, oh, you guys seem like you work, like, really well together, and you the, like, you guys were on time, and you didn't even have, like, monitors just now. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. Well, thanks so a lot, man. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Practice is key. Did you play in a different band that was like acoustic band? I think I might have saw you. I played you. in a lot of bands. I went to the 1011 a while back and uh... Did you see Empty Homes? That was, yeah, we it were, was like uh, kind of country and acoustic. Oh, that, that was me. No, that no. was me. Was it? No. no was <laughs> that would have been sweet. I you, you just look like another guy that I saw play. And then their, their drummer was playing like a cajon and he looked like Cutie Pie. Oh, oh man. Was like, you can play a game. No, <laughs> John and I were in a band. I actually met John from a band that I joined. You know, let's see. It's been three years now. Yeah, it's been a while. Well, okay. Um, you, so you guys have been playing together, just the two of you, ever since, or yeah, on and off? Well, we went a year just uh, writing like acoustic songs. Cool. We tried doing the acoustic thing for a little while. We just we just sit on my back porch and play acoustic songs. After Empty Homes broke up. Awesome. Then. Uh, I can't remember what changed at some point. We just well, our drummer left. He went or the guy that played uh, before we met Josh. Um, he went to school in Florida. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah and uh, for audio. Yeah, and yeah. he and uh, he came back and we did uh, the uh, everything I miss about this place. EP. Which is like uh, as much demos that we got remastered. So it's cool. like it's like high. Def demos, okay. but like it does the trick, you know. Yeah, you, yeah. you got to send those to people in order. To Is get that shows. what you had sent me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that wasn't bad at all. I, I liked it actually. Gotcha. And it kind of, it wasn't like super. I mean, it was like, I guess the recordings were pretty good, but it had kind of like a grungy feel to it. But gotcha. it kind of. That's just because it was recorded like in a garage. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Right, yeah. And it well, was it, just it kind of like worked with your music though. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, when I think of like your style of music or whatever. It's like a lot of reverb. It's like a big, open, and real like uh, stereo songs. Yeah, I don't know, that's just that's what I was I would hear from it. But I think it's pretty accurate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. cool, cool. Uh, what about like I guess gear wise? What are you guys playing through? Oh, um, go guitar. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for me, uh, Black American Standard Telly, just perfect as far as I'm concerned. Hell yeah. Uh, yeah, you can't go wrong with Telly. I run mostly Fender gear. I have an old. Uh, Fender Supersonic uh, half stack, uh, 410. I've had that for a long time. It, it does me well. It's breaking down. I think I'm gonna <laughs> upgrade to a, a twin at some point. Just the cabinet or the head or both? Um, I, I don't know, man. Depends uh, on the wallet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, it does. Gear is not cheap at all, yeah. especially if you're trying to have professional gear. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's also hard like having like a full tube amp. Play, when you're playing gigs, because it's like pretty fragile and stuff. It's fragile and it's heavy. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. I have bought, um, I have a Fender Mustang 5 head, uh -huh. and it's like the closest that I've found that like sounds close to a tube. It's still, you can, you know, it's not, but for live, it's not it too bad. It emulates it really well. Yeah. Especially at high volumes. Yeah, um, yeah, definitely. Fender's come but, a long way. Yeah, definitely. From, but like recording it here, I never hardly use it because I have some full tube amps that I would just rather use. Yeah, tube's definitely my preference. And, uh, yeah, uh, we're we're pretty we're largely a Fender band. We all play Fender guitars. Joey plays a Mustang. Uh, Austin plays a P bass. Cool. Uh, <laughs> Fender, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fender amp. Yeah, yeah, I just use whatever John gives me. <laughs> Actually, I just, I just tell him what to play. Joey plays my guitar. Yeah, he plays <laughs> he plays Austin's Mustang. Okay, cool. I mean, I look good <laughs> playing it. <laughs> he looks good. He, he looks damn good <laughs> playing it. Uh, we try to have a. Uh, with the guitars, we try to have more of an effects-driven sound. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. Big reverbs, yeah. Hall of Fame reverbs, delay. Mm -hmm. um, 
Yeah, that's pretty much our sound, though. We don't we don't have giant pedal boards or anything. The the first time I ever heard them play guitar, I was just like, "How are you making these sounds yeah. <laughs> from a guitar?" Yeah, it's almost like you have you have like a synth guy a guy playing yeah. the synth in the band. It's it's pretty cool. Yeah. A lot of ambience. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You you guys ever think about getting a keys player? Or? Oh, I'll, yeah. I don't know where it would fit in. I can I, I would imagine that during recording, maybe for yeah, maybe for yeah. yeah. Just, I wouldn't say no to one. I just don't know. Yeah. Yeah, well, we we yeah. we played around. Well, I don't, we haven't really played around with the idea, but like I've had the idea of possibly a backing tracks or something. No, more so just samples. Okay, yeah, yeah. I just like play them off a of Mac and then mm-hmm. patch the Mac into like a mixer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So thought about that, but it's probably the closest to like a synth. I want a mm-hmm. rapper. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. We know. We know. Oh, and like a a guy that like just says poetry. Well, actually, you kind of did have that. Oh yeah, of, we have yeah, some spoken, spoken words. Word stuff. Stuff which is pretty cool. I, I've seen other people do it, like, locally, but they kind of just, like, have an acoustic guitar. It just seems off. But, like, with the big ambient guitars and stuff, it sounded really cool, I thought. I like, like it, it captures the emotion yeah, of, yeah. like... Yeah, like, I think I, I cried a little bit. Oh, oh thank you. Yeah. I'm not the first person to say that. Yeah. Dude, Austin's got mad that's, bars, that, but that's, <laughs> that's pretty flattering. Yeah, I remember yeah. the first time we played a show, we played uh, that song in... Uh, it was actually at the Corova, and I saw somebody cry... Really? And I was like, whoa! <laughs> That's crazy. Like, it's like, like, I felt good, but at the same time, I felt <laughs> really bad. <laughs> like, wow, well, my music well, touched Josh a little bit. Josh is bawling by <laughs> the drums. Yeah. I'm, no, I'm happy because I'm just like, great, I don't... All of my sadness is projected onto you. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't help it. Yeah. Just you hold on to this like, for a while. Like, you can't, like, you don't... It's just so overwhelming. Especially because, like, all those kids are just stoned out of their mind. <laughs> and they're probably just panicking. But like it feels, it feels, it feels really good. Like having a panic attack. Everyone's on the floor. You guys like, this feels good. I like this. This, oh, is, those shows this is what I set out to do. Yeah, yeah, good crying sessions at our shows. It's true. <laughs> and the thing is, like, uh, uh, like the way we play our guitars, it's different compared to what most people are used to. Mm-hmm. But to me, I'm so used to playing that way that like I don't know how to play guitar normally now yeah. like if I put it in standard tuning I, I wouldn't know I, I, I can't I can't do the same stuff yeah. and so like uh, so I'll be playing and people are like that sounds really beautiful it sounds really pretty or something but I'm just like oh, it sounds this is normal yeah I'm so used yeah. to this yeah. Yeah, it's, it's always interesting when we play a show and mm-hmm. like someone comes up to us and they're like oh hey I like your music mm-hmm. and my favorite part is when they relate us to a band they like yeah yeah I've I want to like I've heard so yeah. many different like bands. That is true, man. You guys remind me of Bob Marley. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't know oh, if that's yeah. because like like they can't pinpoint us. Yeah, yeah. But whenever a band does like pin, like or like someone comes up to us and says like pinpoints and say, oh you guys are like this band, which is actually like a band that we draw influence from. Yeah, yeah. That's like that's pretty really that's, that's pretty cool. One of the highest compliments. Like we, we had uh, mm-hmm. well our friend Jeff, he the first time we met him, he told us that we sounded like a band on top shelf and that was probably the highest compliment really? that we've ever gotten that awesome was, yeah i like when i was talking to you to you early earlier off of the podcast or whatever i was thinking like before i actually heard you guys play when you came here i just heard like one demo and uh i was like i, <laughs> I told you it's like an angels and airwaves slash modest mouse and then i heard you play this whole set i was like no that's <laughs> not, not at all but I, I kind of get like a circus survive feel, kind of, yeah. but like deeper. If that, I don't know. It's like a thing. Feel. A little darker. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, yeah, we got sidetracked. We were talking about gear, about bass. Yeah, we were. Just the bass and straight into the amp. And yeah. Uh, tuning pedal. Fender P bass. It's a uh, Mexican made, but uh, I mean, it's it's a decent bass. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, newly really strong. Fender. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, Fender bass man. And one pedal, and uh, and a tuner, yeah, which, which is where all your tone comes and from. And everyone, <laughs> okay, okay, everyone that plays music should own <laughs> a tuner. Do you like? I, I think like, tuning pedal, not tuner. Tuning pedal. Yeah, a tuning pedal because stage tuner. Just yeah. Just, I would just think they're, they're amazing. I would think that if you're like, okay, we're playing a show, like you've gotten to the point in your you're gonna play for career, other people. Yeah, it's like you don't have a tuner. Like, yeah. you'd be surprised. I mean, because we check between, yeah. like, every song. I mean, yeah, I'll check important. several yeah. times a song. We'll check mm-hmm. during songs. Yeah. <laughs> I'm checking yeah, right now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, for sure. It's yeah. just, it's frustrating when we see bands that... that it seems like they're not taking themselves seriously or whatever. 
Yeah. yeah. Well, it's like, I mean, it's, it's I, like you don't know what they're exactly doing. It. I've yeah. seen bands that like don't tune at all before a show. Yeah. yeah. They just go on and like. Yeah. You know. We've been on those shows. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like little things that like that that can set you apart from other bands too. Oh, like, yeah. Just being professional, like tuning your instruments, mm-hmm. practicing, yeah. Oh, yeah. knowing your songs, knowing the set lists that just makes the show so much yeah. better. That, that's something that takes a long time because I mean we've all been in bands before. It's mm-hmm. a, it's a process because when you're first starting off, when you start a band in high school, you don't know any of that stuff. You don't know you need to practice the whole time or you need to yeah. tune. Oh, yeah. And it's a learning process. You learn from your mistakes. It really is. I mean, because in our last band, we didn't have tuners, we no. didn't practice much, and we played yeah. a bunch of terrible shows. Yeah, and now yeah. we can look back on it and say, thank God that's... Oh, that was silly. <laughs> yeah, we <laughs> need to be more professional. Yeah. See, well, I, I've had the privilege of... Uh, this is actually the first band I've ever been in. Mm-hmm. And so, like, I learned real quick. Really? And it's like... I, yeah, I yeah, we, we made but you were, yeah. you were in band in high school, like actual band, right? Like, uh, I, I mean, I knew... I played like, saxophone in high school mm-hmm. and jazz band. And everything, and I like I know music. Yeah. Well, and I've, I've been playing guitar for like since I was like ten, mm-hmm. and so it was just a matter of applying that. Like, uh, my parents always got mad at me. Like, we, you have this guitar, you know, you have this talent. Why aren't you playing? Yeah, <laughs> they do something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, please get out of the house. <laughs> and so. Uh, and yeah, Joey's parents have come to a few of our shows. Yeah, my parents <laughs> love us. Like, <laughs> they, they can relate. They, I don't they, know why. They sit through it. Yeah, they, they. But it's like, like my parents are. They're, they're a parent. Their parents, you know. Yeah, but they. I'm familiar with parents. Yeah, I they still them. love. They love us. They're yeah, like yeah. even the screaming. They're just like, wow. it, it sounds like it makes sense. Like, it's really, <laughs> yeah. like we don't mind. Like it's really good. Yeah, well, I, I was gonna say like uh, when you were in high school and band, I was in jazz band, and you kind of learned like, I don't know about how it was. Uh, apparently, well, actually, apparently we went to high school together. We just I didn't know it. Yep. But uh, I went to jazz band in St. Louis and. My music teacher was like hardcore, like tune your instruments or leave the room, and that that oh, was man. like a big deal. And so that I kind of like that's just like drilled into me. But I guess other people don't didn't have that, so that's why it's not apparent to other people. Yeah, everyone like here, you? everyone in the band was in marching band except in high school Austin. except Austin. So I was like, not in yeah. band. I was. At I all. played football. What no, I, I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't play. I played baseball up to my sophomore year. All state, I, no big deal. And I never, I never <laughs> played. So I just quit, <laughs> and I did nothing, and I played, I was in a band in high school, yeah. and uh, we were really terrible, uh, yeah. <laughs> At least you can look back and say that, like, we were so good, but, like, oh, I mean, know. we thought we were good yeah, in high school, then, and then I'm like, yeah, it's, yeah. It, was, it was really bad. I know for me, uh, everything I learned from marching band definitely helped me out, like, still, like, mm-hmm. his, like, uh, my drum teacher was, he, he was re- really big in a marching band, mm-hmm. uh, He'd gone to like drum corps and stuff. Uh, it's like major league marching band for those who don't know yeah. what it is. And uh, I mean, like all the stuff I learned from marching band, like grips and how, like different, different positions for the stuff. hands and like rudiments. Yeah, yeah. like uh, I, I got really into hybrid rudiments into my senior year, junior year. Cool. So like I'll try to incorporate that stuff into here. And like when I talk to other people about it that like weren't into marching band about like drumming yeah, stuff, they they're always that. like, what? Like what's yeah. What's a cheese a doodle? Right. <laughs> cheese yeah. pot of flaw flaw. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't know if you're familiar with Travis Barker from Blue Oh, yeah, yeah. He, he does all that, too. He yeah. marching band. You, I don't know if you guys follow him on Snapchat or Instagram or anything, but he puts up all his, like, marching stuff. And then yeah. you can see, like, he'll put, like, do the different flanges or paradiddles or whatever in yeah. his roles, and it really, like, sets it apart from other gotcha. drummers. Yeah, like, even today, like, I'll go home and play my practice band, and I'll still yeah, play, yeah. like, stuff I know from marching. Yeah. So it definitely still like helps out with the stuff I'm doing now. Yeah, definitely. So I sold my saxophone. <laughs> oh, you oh. guys could have been a ska band, but no, you <laughs> sold a saxophone. Oh man, I would love to be a ska band. Oh yeah, I would love that. Missed opportunities. <laughs> yeah. What What are you playing through? Just a uh, couple pedals, right? Uh, I just have a tuner pedal, and it's a, a small distortion pedal. Oh, okay. It's something special, but I mean like it it puts emphasis. Uh, when you did. Okay. I don't know. Oh, that's really? the one on the left. Yeah, it's the. <laughs> it's not a good. Uh, it's Put okay. my foot on it. It does. It gets the job done. And then I have a black star that's that John, like amp that John gave me. Cool. And I know. Is it is it full tube as well or? Yeah, it's tube amp. Okay, awesome. Cool. Really, really loud. I really like it. I'm <laughs> never gonna have to buy another amp in my life ever again. <laughs> and it's a combo amp, right? Ah. Uh, yeah, yeah black stars are good amps. 
Um, yeah, they get like kind of a lot of shit actually. A lot of people talk down on them, but I like them. Oh, uh, they're not. I guess because they're not. They're not like band. Marshall or Gibson. They're probably underrated, yeah. honestly. Do what? They're just underrated. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of gear like that. I have a um, combo yeah, amp that's a custom, and uh, I hadn't even heard of it before. I bought it because it was cheap and it was tubes. Oh yeah, it sounds awesome. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I think it's just all around. Like, there's a lot of gear you can find whether yeah. you play guitar, bass, or drums, or even like audio stuff like mics. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You can find low end stuff that's just really underrated. Yeah, it's just yeah. a matter of knowing what you're doing. Yeah, there's that's kind of the, something I learned when I was like in school for audio is don't always go by like reviews or go by what's known as like a good thing like you until you hear it yourself and test it in whatever situation you have like yeah. a really crappy amp can sound awesome like I know that um, Red Hot Chili Peppers experimented with like crappy mics and stuff oh yeah and it's like some of the recordings came out awesome you know yeah huh. what about uh, what are you playing on drums uh, right now I'm playing on a Pacific uh, Concept Maple kit uh, I bought it as a 7-piece only because I wanted a second floor tom, <laughs> and I never played as a 7-piece. I just play as a 5-piece. Yeah. Uh, one rack, two floor toms, or one up, two down. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what I play. Gotcha. Um, for cymbals, I, right now I'm playing on a, the Zildjian S series. It's a new line that just came out. I saw them, but I haven't heard them yet. Well, I heard you play them just Yeah. Um, uh, they... They're like the bridge that Zildjian just made to go from like the ZHTs. Middleman. Yeah, they they cut out ZHT for them, but oh, really? they're a bit better. They're I think they're a lot better than ZHT. Cool. Uh, they're like the middleman of like your low end and yeah. your high end. Like uh, I've seen a few people like add them on. Like, do you know who uh, August Burns Red is? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Matt Griner actually plays a few S's oh, really? along with his uh, Z's and A's. Awesome. I was actually look looking to buy some more symbols for my kid. I have. Pitch Blacks, which I really like. It was really cool. And I have some Avitas, whatever, Customs or something. Oh, yeah. But um, I wanted something, like, brighter, and those sound pretty bright. I like yeah, them. like, I'm playing on the... They have, uh, I think, two lines. They have the regular line, just Zildjian S, and then mm -hmm. they have Zildjian S Rock. Okay. Uh, I went with the Zildjian S Rock because they're thicker symbols, and uh, the set I bought, uh, instead of them being 14-inch hi-hats, uh, 16 and 18 crash, mm -hmm. and, uh, like, a 20-inch ride, what I got was 14-inch hats, 18-inch uh, crash, 20-inch 20 cr 20-inch crash, and then 22-inch ride. So for this music, I definitely felt like that was going to be a bit more. Yeah, I can tell too. Really? Like whenever she's got new symbols, it's just like shit. Like it really makes an impact. It's yeah. Like yeah. this, like we were talking about earlier, this your your sound and your band is like a very like big sounding like all about ambiance and like yeah, that, that's really like shiny symbols <laughs> but like I mean not like shiny looking like sounding they're real uh, washy and yeah they, that, they really I definitely took music. that into account while I was symbol shopping because mm -hmm. uh, uh, well initially I really <laughs> wanted to get minor symbols uh, I, if, I don't even know what that is what yeah it? they're extremely underrated but they're literally like the best symbols I've ever really? heard yeah my, really great symbols um a lot of people like metalcore play them, okay. but, but they have like all sorts of lines. Like they have jazz lines, um, rock lines, or regular lines that are just like regular symbols. Mm -hmm. uh, really good stuff though. They have a lot of really good reputable drummers on their rosters. Cool. But, I haven't uh, heard one. Definitely have to check that out. Yeah, but um, didn't really have the money <laughs> to <laughs> yeah. splurge on Put that, so I went with the S series because um, they. They weren't really too much too expensive. Yeah, yeah. But they were like just like the right right in the right middle, price, yeah. you know. That's kinda like all the gear I buy right now is kinda right. It's like it's not the cheap stuff, but it's definitely not the expensive yeah. stuff. Yeah. So I went yeah. with the S series. Um so yeah, instead of buying the regular series, I went the rock line because yeah. one, they're thicker symbols, two, they're bigger symbols. So mm -hmm. I knew that was definitely gonna be like more wash. Yeah. Uh, more cut. Um I knew, like, they would, they would just see more of, like, a, a looming sound. Yeah. Versus, like, a sound that just, like, is in the middle, you know? Mm-hmm, definitely. So, uh, for heads, I'm playing, uh, what am I playing? Uh, Evans Clear G2s and all my toms, the G1s under. Uh, for my snare, I'm playing, what am I playing? EC Drive? Something like, it's a... Do you remember the name of it? It's a thick head. <laughs> it's a it's a single ply head oh, coated really? and then all around it has little holes to let out air. So oh, it, I, 
I had uh, that before. I think I have one in the other room. Oh, really? Yeah, it's, it's Evans, right? Yeah. Yeah, I I, I liked that, the, but I like I tore through them too quickly. Gotcha. They're well, like so thin, I was like soup pulling them. Yeah, well, the reason why I wanted to go with that head is because I knew it would be a drier sound. Mm-hmm. And I, I want a drier sounding snare. Instead of a poppy. Yeah. yeah. And then under, I just have a, a Genera resonant head, I think. Cool. Um, my bass, I'm playing with a MZ Mad, and then EC2 for the bat, uh, Rezo head. Yeah, and you had a kickboard too, right? Yeah, I got a kickboard. Cool, yeah. I, yeah. I, I got one of those just because it looked interesting, and then I put it in, I was like, this makes a huge difference. Yeah. Like, it's a must-have now. Definitely. I actually saw that they make, like, little ones for your toms that look pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. really, like, they stun your tom. Yeah. It's true. It's awesome. Yeah, um, but right now I'm considering switching over from G2 clears to G2 coated, just to go for um, a drier sound. Mm-hmm. Cause, uh, usually I don't play with anything to dampen them. Usually I just play like G2s, nothing on them. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Occasionally, like I'll try to slap on moon gels. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it depends on where we're playing. Like mm-hmm. we've played outside a few times. Yeah. And uh, going from outside to inside, you definitely yeah, have it's like very different. Very yeah. different. In like every club you play in. Is different acoustics are like oh, I know the Corova is like kind of terrible it's got that big like bass trap above the stage oh yeah so yeah different. our experiences at the Corova haven't been they've all really? been different I think yeah yeah they I never mean, they never had feedback monitors but other than that the sound was pretty good but like yeah. playing wise I don't know maybe how playing wise but like listening I can't hear any oh, of those yeah. <laughs> it's oh, pretty okay. terrible there <laughs> the band yeah <laughs> I want to hear that <laughs> yeah yeah it's actually kind of cool because um Right now, their uh, sound, like their speaker, their speaker set and all mm-hmm. that, was actually owned by the White Rabbit. Oh, really? When the White, did do you know about the White Rabbit? Yeah, it closed down like right when I started getting to the local scene. Gotcha. Yeah, so it was kind of cool. I know that. they just had that uh, reunion show or whatever. Yeah. Were you guys at that? Uh, no. We, we tried to. Or somebody asked us if we were gonna be playing that. I, I tried getting us on, and it was kind of like you guys are too new to be here type of. Well, okay, I was kind of mad. I was kind of frustrated because I asked uh, the guy who books. I was like, hey, you know, that'd be cool mm-hmm. if we could play this. And he was like, oh, do you have any affiliations with the White Rabbit? And, I mean, we've never played the White Rabbit. We're a pretty new yeah. band. But uh, they had another band. It was their first show. Really? First show. And I was like, you know. Yeah. But it's, it happens. That's probably more you know. appropriate for the White Rabbit, you know, a band playing their first show. <laughs> yeah. There's some... But uh, I know they had a lot of good bands. I mean, it was like a whole three-day festival. That was pretty yeah. cool. I, no I didn't disrespect. get to go. I was working. No disrespect to the White Rabbit. <laughs> yeah. I should, uh, yeah. I should respect you. Yeah. Well, what are what are the future plans for you guys? Are you uh, think about recording or touring or tour secret stuff? Yeah, I don't know what tour. what you can say or can't say we're right now. We're looking to. <laughs> well, we're looking to record really anything right now. Uh, we thought about doing uh, a full a full length. We thought about doing another EP. We really want to do a split. Um, there's just not many bands around here that would yeah, want to do that. that. Yeah. 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 Um, that's, that's definitely the hard thing. Like. And we also. Go ahead. Like there's not re- like there's not too much of a scene uh-huh. for like the music we play. Like in San yeah, Antonio, it's definitely awesome. there is. There, it, it's usually we usually play with pop punk bands. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've played with some metal bands in San Antonio. In Austin, there's a scene. Uh, it's just a little bit more aggressive. Mm-hmm. No, we we played this thing called Sad Fest in Austin. I guess just a couple weeks ago. And it was full of emo bands that really? we fit pretty well with. Yeah. Uh, but that's really one of the few shows we've played where we really fit in. Yeah. You you guys are. Um, I think it's very different, but it's kind of a good thing, I guess, because it sets you apart, and, like, like, if I was at the Crove and I heard you guys play, I would, like, usually I'm, like, just, like, whatever band is on the main stage, I don't really care, just watch with whoever, but, I like, if I would have seen you guys play, I would have, like, talked to you after your set and be like, hey, you guys want to come record? Because, <laughs> like, it's very different, and it kind of pulls people's attention towards you or whatever. Well, yeah, and, uh, they like to book us at the Crove with, like a local show or like a show that they'll know there'll be a lot of people there Yeah, we won't fit in but it's like it's exposure yeah 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 well, we, we played with the System of a Down cover band yeah, oh, I thought I say with System of a Down I was like really <laughs> I mean the thing it's always interesting to see 
how people are going to respond to our music. Yeah, yeah. Because it's just, I mean, we really have no idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's a there's a niche like with the, with our with our music. There's a growing community. Mm-hmm. It's like if you were to tell all the kids who are into this music, mm-hmm. hey, here's a festival with a bunch of bands that you would love. Mm-hmm. Like there would be enough people. There's a community for that. Yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. difficult to get everybody together. Yeah, and reaching yeah. them mm-hmm. and like becoming like a dominant name in that. Yeah, yeah. But I'm pretty sure in a few months' time, it's, it's up and coming. Yeah, because we've only got we've only made progress like, expo- not, like exponentially, pretty yeah. much. Yeah, it's going a lot better than expected. Well, yeah, we'll yeah. Well. like I was saying earlier, like I thought from the first show in Summit we were gonna play at one other show. Yeah, yeah. Before that happened, I had in my head like, oh, yeah, I'm gonna join this band, but I really have no idea where it's gonna go. Maybe yeah. we might not go anywhere. Mm-hmm. And then like looking back, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> looking back, like we don't like these guys. <laughs> Looking back, like, we played, like, 10, 11 shows over the summer. Um, not just, like, in one place. Like, we started off in Austin. We played San Antonio. Mm-hmm. We played Arlington. Um, where else have we played? We played a show in Denton. 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 Like Houston pretty soon. We, have, we had a show in New Braunfels. Uh, Laredo. 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 Cool. Yeah, but, I mean, getting getting back to the future. Oh, yeah. I, 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 <laughs> that's what we're talking about. We, we had no idea how this was going to work out. I... Honestly, I just kind of assumed it would just kind of burn out, like and most bands I think, do. I think we yeah. all kind of did. But now we're <laughs> looking at, I mean, we, I, we can't announce too much here, but we're looking at uh, a sure. tour coming up in the winter. Well, hopefully we're going to record very soon. We need to get some more releases up. We've written a ton of songs for the summer. Which you'll hear. That we yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, I think the future is pretty bright for us. Hopefully mm-hmm. we can stay together. And... Uh, keep practicing and playing because every time we play a show I feel like we our audience grows a little bit awesome yeah so well, I mean and a lot of people are really nice you know people that uh, I mean we've gotten a lot of shows just from the friendships we've made yeah and uh, I mean even you know bands from out of town you know yeah 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 just uh, bands from all over uh, everybody's really nice and it's uh, it's yeah, it's it's always been really cool, like to play a show, and then we meet like another band that's playing, and then like we just kind of hang out with them and talk to them. We always make friends with the other bands. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's one of Which, our and, and we're not social people at all. <laughs> like, Josh he is. Josh yeah, is Josh, very social. This guy can sell. He is yeah. a social butterfly. He's the one that got you guys here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I I actually I worked at Journeys for like two years. <laughs> I sold shoes for a while. Yeah. Every time I look over at Josh, he's like. On his phone, messaging someone to get us on a show, <laughs> or he's trying to get us to record somewhere. Like Josh has booked more shows than all of us combined. <laughs> it's relentless. It's, and we don't, and we don't use, we haven't, we don't have a manager. We do it all on our own. I've probably booked the least amount of shows. You booked the first show. Yeah, the, okay, I booked the first show. That was an important show. And but I mean, Josh. So you just booked, you booked the first one. That's all that matters, right? Yeah. You're off the hook. Yeah, for the I, rest of the yeah I don't. Josh, I don't think that's. Uh, Josh has booked most of our San Antonio. Honestly, we get invited to play in San Antonio really? more than people just book us. That's cool. Yeah, uh, which is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, now we're uh, we're working with another band. We're gonna get out of state in December, or January, and uh, we're gonna go down uh, the West Coast, which is. We're gonna go ahead. Tell them the dates. Oh, should I do it again? Yeah. Wait, <laughs> uh, no, so no. this this uh, these are the dates that we have so far. Yeah, we're looking at uh, for for a tour. For a yeah, tour, for a tour. In, in the winter. We'll 26 through the 26th to the 9th. Um, I think so. Austin is on the 26th, right? Yeah, it's yeah Austin, it'll, it'll San Antonio. Be, uh, uh, no, it'll be Austin, San Antonio, Albuquerque, Colorado Springs, Cheyenne, Wyoming, Salt Lake City. Uh, Maybe Boise, probably not Boise. Then we'll go to Washington. We'll play Walla Walla, Seattle, Portland. Then we're gonna go to California. We'll be in Reading, San Francisco, Oxnard. Stockton, and Oxnard. Yeah. And then we'll head back, and that'll be our first tour. Up. Yeah, we're working with another band out of California. I don't want to name drop them right now. But we'll yeah, <laughs> uh, we're hoping to drop a split with them. Yeah, yeah. So um, keep your eyes out. For if that you one. listen to the Stone Haters. <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel like you guys would do good in Portland. I'm so I'm excited. I've never been to Portland. Me never. neither, but I just watched that show Portlandia. And <laughs> oh, I love Portlandia. <laughs> we all love that show. We just like, isn't it like Austin, but like professional? <laughs> no, I think it's less professional. I don't know. I just, I just know it's like hipster city or something. Yeah, Portland's like Austin with a high unemployment rate. 
Do you got a dollar? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, we're really uh, we're really excited about the future. Um, like John said, this is uh, this is the first tour we've ever gone on. So awesome. It's gonna be a test. It's gonna be. But expensive. I think it's gonna be <laughs> expensive, and oh, we'll probably yeah. well, make no money. Everybody always loses money on their first tour. But and that's I mean. <laughs> I mean, know, like we're not. Like you know, it's not about money right now, I guess. Yeah. No. Well, I mean, like when we play shows, like we never like play for the money. Like yeah. for me personally, we it's don't we don't make money. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, like, <laughs> an option. <laughs> for me personally, like it's it's a really really good outlet for me. Mm -hmm. you oh, know, it's so it so is for all of us. Go. Yeah, so I mean, like, I think that's what really pushes us to uh, the play. Just you know, it's yeah, a good definitely. outlet. Uh, just playing live is a great outlet, and then you make so many connections. You meet people you've never met, yeah, and you listen to bands you would have never listened to otherwise. And it's just playing live, even if it's just locally, is just such a great experience. From, yeah, I mean, from all over the country too. Oh yeah. Just, I mean, we played with a lot of touring bands, and yeah, it's 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 really cool. Like, uh, is. Hey, even crowds. I mean, we've played for decent crowds, mm -hmm. and they respond well. But I mean, it's also been times where it's like we play and there's not like people there. But it's still fun. Yeah. yeah. Like uh, we're writing music that like it's purely what we feel like inside. I believe, yeah. and it's like collectively, and we play it. And it, no matter what the context, it, it's always it's it's still fun to me. Yeah. yeah I don't definitely. like you guys, but I mean like <laughs> I, I don't really care. it's always fun. Yeah, I mean, like, there's been, like, one show where we got paid. Yeah, we don't, we don't get paid. And yeah. We're not looking to. Um, That's just going to go back in the band anyway right now, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, we all we all have jobs. We're not, we're not <laughs> living off this. We're, yeah, yeah. Well, something that's really hard is that we're also all, like, full-time students yeah. at yeah. universities. Oh, and yeah. And it's, like, finding time to do things like this. Yeah, yeah. Like, shit. Like, <laughs> Yeah. So is your tour going to be, like, on break from school or whatever? Yeah, it'll yeah. be on our winter break. And we're going to be racing to get back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. First day. The class starts to be the day after our last show, so we have to get from so we're gonna be Central there. California all the way back to Texas in one day. Oh, wow. But so. Oh, I th didn't you say that you were fine with missing the first day? It is still this week. I would like to make it back, but I'm not going to make it back. <laughs> That's good, yeah. Your professor's going to listen to this. <laughs> I'll hold. That'll be, that'll be dope. Yeah. <laughs> if he's listening to this, you know... That's great. <laughs> also, I apologize. No. I'm not apologizing for shit. <laughs> give me an A. <laughs> well, all right. You want to, um, I guess we can wrap it up here. Uh, you want to tell everyone where you, they can find you at? And oh, I guess your Facebook and everything. Uh, you can find us on Bandcamp, iTunes, Spotify, Apple Music, Google Play, Amazon. Did I get them all? Yeah, like uh, basically all the major... Uh, and, uh, streaming platforms you yeah, can listen to our music as far as social media goes we're most active on Twitter you can uh, follow us at at ICLandTX we're also on Facebook I have no idea it's the same It's the same thing on Facebook same thing on Facebook most active on Twitter we're most hilarious on Twitter I'd say <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we enjoy Twitter um, we do post things on Instagram I don't understand Instagram personally occasional yeah see that's all I am about Twitter I don't get Twitter I'm like Instagram's like my jam Twitter's perfect you can do anything on Twitter you can say whatever you want on Twitter Okay, Instagram. my mom's not on Twitter that's great <laughs> yeah that's awesome by the way like, <laughs> if my parents found it <laughs> oh god yeah that's the, the advantage of Twitter okay cool I guess we will see you guys later, later, and good luck on your tour and further endeavors. All right. Thank, Thank you. Thanks for having us. Stugger, yeah, stugger, baby. Yep, yep. Bye. Well. Harambee.